Excellent. Right. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I am here today with the lovely Krista from Wag Out Loud. Um, Krista is going to do a much, much better introduction than I ever will. So I'm going to pretty much hand straight over. But I do want to mention, just in case she doesn't, for some reason, um, that you are talking to another fellow Norwich Terrier owner and fan over here. So big up the Norwiches, but also big up the Terriers in general as well. So thank you so much for joining us, Krista. How are you today? Joe, thank you so much for having me. I am fantastic. Thank you. Here in the States, it's the day after Thanksgiving. So uh, for those crazy people that got up super early for Black Friday sales, I'm not one of them. Okay. I'm, I'm in my own little bubble in my own house with my dog and I'm happy. I think it sounds perfect, to be honest. I have to say, I really, really love the background for where you are oh thank <laughs> you that was really really good <laughs> my blank wall to shame I think I've got a fly and something on there but apart from that there's no decoration at all <laughs> well the secret is I'm in my bedroom because ah. uh when you do a podcast you probably know that audio is key yep. and I can't be in the office which is all hardwood floors which ah. does not have good sound quality so I'm here with the bed and the carpet but yes, this little area looks like I'm, I don't know, in a little barn or something. It looks, it looks like you're in your own little booth or something somewhere. Yes. It's pretty cool. I like it. I like it. They wouldn't have said your bedroom, definitely. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Everyone knows now. Everyone ignore <laughs> that last bit. Ignore all what you heard. Right. <laughs> so, Krista, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and also about Wag It Loud, your podcast as well. Oh, Joe, thank you. Well, my gosh, um, I have been interested in canine health for a long time. My previous Norwich, Higgins, had seizures and three different veterinarians could not figure out why. And at the same time, we were looking at getting a Norfolk. I thought, how cute, Norfolk and a Norwich. Uh, and she was nine. She was already a senior. And uh, the people that owned her said, we'll sell her to you if you feed raw. You have to promise to feed her raw. I had never fed raw before. Uh, I was feeding kibble to Higgins because I didn't know better. But once we got Pixel, I thought, well, I might as well feed Higgins raw as well. He never got another seizure ever. So that got me thinking, oh, there is something to this nutrition thing. So fast forward back in 2018, I was walking my current dog, Winston, and it just came to me. I want to become certified in canine nutrition. I did that. It was a year because uh, I had a J-O-B at the time. <laughs> so it took me a year to get through it. Very intense. Um, and then decided with that knowledge, I'm going to start a podcast. Brilliant. Never did it before, didn't know what I was thinking, but <laughs> it just happened. So that was two and a half years ago. And I have released one episode every single month. And I am learning so much with the experts that come on the show. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm very passionate to help others advocate for their dog's health and wellness mm, I think that's absolutely fantastic um, I hadn't realized about Higgins um, my first Norwich Cassie had seizures all her life from two years old to 16 and a half she had seizures oh. um, but I could control it I could she could go at one point she could go a few years between seizures raw fed really really good diet avoided certain uh, certain extra bits and ingredients and things really really made a difference so it I, I totally understand what you're coming from when you've had an experience like that it really does kind of open your eyes up and make you start you, you notice everything in on a packet don't you and anything you sort of think oh what does that say well, yeah exactly what does that mean what am I feeding my dog here mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can't pronounce it don't feed it <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what it means probably don't give it to your dog no. Um, but no I do I do know what you mean and it does make quite a difference certainly um for, for Cassie I know that chicken and rosemary were both triggers for her and you know going back to 2000 when I first got her she was she was diagnosed at, at two with idiopathic epilepsy which is kind of the go-to we've tried a few things we don't really know why she's seizing therefore it must be epilepsy it kind of that's how we do it over here sure. 
Um, um, but she never went on to medication. I always managed to, to work around it. And I used things like tea touch to bring her out of seizures. And oh, good. Sure there wasn't any bad you know, sense or anything. And, and you know, I, I knew what sort of triggered her. Um, but back then, nearly every dog treat and most dog foods had chicken in of some sort. If it, even if it was a lamb flavor, it would have chicken fat. Right. <laughs> Everything had chicken in. It was just mad, which is why I put her onto, onto raw. And, and all my dogs have been on raw since. Um, and um, I'm struggling because the, the new puppy, she's on she's on kibble. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and my God, you can tell the difference. Bless her heart. You know, it, 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 by the time she got up this morning and it would, I think it passed about an hour and a half, she'd had three poos. Mine do one a day, you know. It's like, yes, exactly. What you feed them and what comes out as well. Gross. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was quite hard. So I ended up, so raw made it easier. Making my own treats made it easier. Um, but it, it is much much better now I believe there's there's so much more range and people are a little bit more aware and you've got more um, in-betweens haven't you between raw and kibble so if you can't do raw for any reason there are a few sort of areas in between absolutely like, yeah. so like many that. more choices now yeah, yes there are quite I mean I'm a big raw person but <laughs> not I'm with you bad. sister <laughs> <laughs> So your your podcast is Wag Out Loud. I love that it's a podcast as well, rather than a podcast. I think Thank that's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the the topic for us for today, which is another topic that I'm very passionate about, which is senior dogs, and it is Senior Dogs Month in November. Um, so what I wanted to kind of look at and ask you about um, is with senior dogs, and we've both got senior dogs, and obviously people watching have as well. That's why they're here um is there much of a difference between the kind of nutrition that benefits a dog when they're older compared to a dog when they're puppy adult different times of their lives a little bit yes um first of all you know we we touched on raw versus kibble mm. and i don't want to shame anybody because that's not what we're here to do no. if you have the means <laughs> then in a perfect world, feeding raw, even when they're a puppy to adulthood is the best way to feed your dog. Now, Joe, you know that there's two camps. Oh, dogs are carnivores. Oh, no, 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 dogs are omnivores. And for those that have taken the omnivore approach, they're going way to the other side mm. to plant-based diets. Yeah. I personally do not agree with that. Dogs are still 99% DNA of the gray wolf. If you look at their body composition, how they digest food, even the teeth in their mouth, they are flesh eaters. So rewind, perfect world, raw diet. That is a live food with the live enzymes to help your dog thrive throughout their lives. If, you know, I've got people that say, well, Krista, I've got five big dogs. I cannot <laughs> afford to feed raw. Well, where do I store it? <laughs> That's okay. If you need to feed kibble, I encourage you to add fresh food to that kibble. Mm, definitely. And it's so easy. Mm. You can put in an egg, a raw egg. You can put in a scrambled egg. It is the world's most perfect protein. I would like you to add some veg for some phytonutrients and antioxidants. And many of us know that you can't just feed a whole carrot to a dog. They're not going to digest it. It's going to come out the other end, a whole carrot. <laughs> so <laughs> when you're feeding fruits and veg, you either want to put it into, uh, you know, want to blitz it, pulverize it or lightly steam it. And they do really well on dark leafy greens like kale or spinach. Okay, I'm digressing. <laughs> so depending on how you feed your dog, as you mentioned, Joe, we have so many other options. I'm the lazy person and I just don't have the time and wherewithal to do a homemade diet. I bless those people that can do that but to make sure that your dog gets all of the nutrients that they need, that is why I go commercial. Right. If you want to do a home cooked meal, go for it. But I would just have to warn you that 
most of the recipes that you find online are not complete and balanced. And most people just being people (laughs) are going to start substituting in that recipe. And yeah, I'm sorry, you're just setting your dog up for success or not setting your dog up for success if you do (laughs) not follow a complete and balanced recipe. So depending on where you are with what you feed, we have the dry processed, we have the canned, we have, now we've got all these companies delivering right to your door, (laughs) home cooked meals. You fill out this application, it's custom to your dog. You can even get raw meals Mm -hmm. frozen delivered to your door. So we do have a lot of options, but in their senior years, you know, dogs are going to get issues like joint, you know, arthritis, mobility issues. Maybe with those issues, with limited mobility, your dog is going to maybe gain a little bit of weight due to decreased activity or maybe slower digestion. And I don't know about across the pond, but here in the U.S., we have such a high risk of diabetes and dogs that are obese or overweight, over 50% of all dogs. And then with senior dogs, you definitely want to make sure that their dental health, that you're, you know, I brush Winston's teeth every single day, Um, but they also can get kidney and heart disease as well. So yes, senior dogs, we need to really pay attention to their nutrition, but I think it's pretty easy. And we're going to talk about protein here in a little bit. Um, But we already talked about raw food (laughs) or kibble. You can always add, I mean, eggs you can put on top of kibble, a can of sardines in water. Beautiful, inexpensive, great omegas, love it. So when you're feeding, feed high quality, minimally processed meat if you can, because that is keeping the original nutrients intact in a fresh whole food diet. And that's where your dog is going to reap the benefits. Do you have anything to add, Joe, before we dive in? There was something I forgot what it was. I'm writing stuff down. And I, I wrote one thing down. I should have wrote the thing I was thinking of in my mind, and I can't remember what it was. I do feed more because we have hens and um, we have ducks and chickens that we keep. So we have fresh eggs in Wonderful. abundance every day. And I was getting oh. really at least once a day. And I forget duck or chicken. Ducks being a higher protein, um, but they like all of the eggs. <laughs> yes, I bet. When the quail are laying, they get quail eggs as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, you it, they get an egg and it gets broken they get one of those as well um, and oh. they do love them they do love their eggs definitely um there's there's over here over here it probably is the same for you um there's a lot of if you can get the trays um, where the food is cooked in the tray to keep the mm-hmm. milk in um a lot of them are a meat and rice so much dog food's got rice in it which i find yes. I find bizarre because it's quite inflammatory, isn't it, rice? But it's 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 still something that vets over here will still tell people if your dog's got an upset stomach, feed them chicken and rice. And I don't know why they do that because they must know <laughs> that it's inflammatory. So I find that a really yeah. bonkers thing to add in. But a lot of foods have got rice in. So then, of course, people try and do their own things at home. So they'll add rice to the food or pasta <laughs> and you'll go, they don't need either of those things but there's right. a human diet human diet you need to have a carb in there somewhere um am i right in thinking that dogs don't need carbs carbohydrates Bingo. <laughs> they have no and i mean no nutritional need for carbohydrates mm. yet when you look at that dry processed food flip it over most kibble is over 40 percent carbohydrates yeah. So when you look at something like that, I compare it to our high processed diet, fast food. So if I have a bowl of kibble, I can liken that to a bowl of inflammation 
Or let's say that I say, Joe, for the rest of your life, twice a day, you're going to eat Captain Crunch cereal. Yeah, That's all you're going to eat. Do you think that that is going to keep you healthy throughout your life? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm going to get, a little, think so. I'm going to get a little boost so, in the morning and then a lag for the rest of the day, I think. Exactly. <laughs> so the same thing is happening to our dogs. And I know we don't have time today, but with that high carbohydrate load, whether it's grains or non-grains, so those starchy vegetables are doing the same thing. They are turning into glucose and your dog doesn't need that. They thrive on using fat as fuel. They don't need the sugars. So I really am glad that you pointed that out um, because they don't need carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. But when I say feed them fruits and veg, yes, that is good carbohydrates, but I would limit that to 10% or less of their complete diet during the day, the cal the caloric intake that they're taking in. Okay. So as I mentioned, 50% of the dogs here in the U S are obese or overweight. And it's because of these hard, high carbohydrate diets that our dogs are getting diabetes, just like we are getting diabetes. So it's very interesting how it parallels with our health and the dog's health as well. So um, if your dog maybe has a sluggish metabolism that they're not as active as they used to be, they might put on a few extra pounds. So again, if this is happening, look at their carbohydrates, because if they're eating a raw or fresh diet with the oils that they should be taking in as well, the anti-inflammatories, you know, whether it's fish oil or there are other oils out there now, um, I would encourage you to reduce the carbohydrates mm -hmm. and let your dog drop that weight, especially a senior dog. I mean, they already have the joint issues and just adding that weight is going to make them just worse, more inflammation. It's going to hurt them more with the excess weight. So I really want people to look at that and talk to your vet because it's not cute when your dog is roly poly. It's just no. not. No. And no. I mean, our vets over here definitely are as a whole um, are very much into trying to help people with recognizing that their dog is overweight. So many times I have someone bring the dog into classes and they'll say, could you, would you mind checking my dog? My, my vet said that they're really overweight or they're obese and they're not always, sometimes the dog looks fine. And I'll say, to be fair, they could lose a little bit yeah they could lose a little bit and then they'd be they'd be great but I wouldn't say they're obese sometimes they're not as obese as the vets told them um but there is still the big issue people still don't recognize they don't look at their dog and think yeah I can see what you're telling me you know with the, the, the body charts and things like that yes. people just don't see it and look at their dog and see that there's there's the same thing happening there and it's not just dogs that are, dogs that are hairy like mine and like ours <laughs> not, really, <laughs> not as easy to see sometimes um but you know any any breed that's even got a really nice outline that you can see and you can actually see that the body the waist is out here like this and mm -hmm. the, the underneath is showing straight there's no tuck at the end or anything people really struggle with seeing that actually their dog does need to lose a little bit of weight. Um, mm -hmm. And even when their vets are telling them that, so vets are trying, but people don't, they don't want to hear that their dog's overweight or they don't want to, they don't want to kind of come to terms, I suppose, with the fact that maybe they have caused their dog to become overweight or they don't know what to do. Because it's one thing for, to be told by your vet, your dog needs to lose weight, but then they don't tell them how. Right. What can we do? So then people automatically, oh, I want to do agility with my dog to help them lose weight. And I won't, I will not let a dog join agility if they're overweight because they don't right. need to be jumping and landing. No, that's... <laughs> While carrying excess weight, there are ways to lose it first. <laughs> I agree. I agree. But I will say, you know, once you know what the body condition store score is of your dog, you know, dogs should have a waist and you should be able to feel your dog's ribs. 
it, that is the optimal weight. And some people might say, oh my gosh, they're too skinny. No, <laughs> it's perfect. So if you do need to put them on a calorie restricted diet, do it slowly. Don't do it quickly um, because they can actually become malnourished. So slowly, but look at those calories and just cut back slow. Um, their digestion might slow down in the older years. They might get constipated. And that's another reason why I love the vegetables, the green leafy vegetables, which are going to provide the fiber that they need. So it also feeds the good bacteria. It's great prebiotics um, for the gut microbiome. And we all know about that. Mm, so very popular, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Well, we have to remember over 80% of the immune system is in the gut. Mm. That's for us too. Yeah. So yeah. we want to make sure, and it's, and it's when you're feeding just kibble, thus inflammation that leads to leaky gut and all of the problems that it comes with the itchiness and the uh, hot spots. And eyes. And <laughs> yes. It's you're right, Bling. Joe. It's just yes. it's yes. chain reaction. So much, isn't there? So many things it can lead to. Yeah. Yes. And of course, we treat this what we see without treating the inside. So we we have dogs that have had ear infection after ear infection, and it's not. It's just they're trying to get rid of toxins, and yes, eyes are inflamed all the time, and they're nibbling all the fur off their paws. You know, there's just so much going on. Um, but there's so much that can be helped. By starting inside, <laughs> it makes such a big difference, not just behaving, but, but health wise as well. It really does. Um, so, with what was I going to say? Oh, the calorie uh, restricted diet. So, when we've got dogs that are, oh, end of my pens come off, that are that bit older, and so perhaps their metabolism has slowed down and the weight is creeping on a little bit. Um, with a calorie restricted diet, are there are there things that can replace some of the kibble to reduce calories or is that not something that you'd recommend? Cause I, I see online a lot of people, you know, good old online people will say, Oh, reduce their food a bit, but give them um, string beans and things like that instead. Cause that fills them up. Sure. You, know, you, you can, you can swap a bit of their regular food for something that's much, <laughs> much more healthier for them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, could. you could, you could, what you want, of course, is a high quality protein mm. first, because you're not doing them any justice by feeding a kibble that the protein source is a meat meal. Yes. That again, so 4 chicken <laughs> inflammation <laughs> is the reason for disease. Yeah. And I, I really encourage people to look at a high quality protein and then they need fat, of course. So the protein that they're going to get is from muscle meat mm -hmm. as well as organs. Yes. The organs contain all the minerals, all the good stuff that the dogs need. So you also want to make sure they get enough calcium. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of these recipes contain uh, bone. Yeah. So it's very important. It's not as easy. And going back to our first conversation, people think I'm doing good by my dog. I make chicken and rice and that's it. <laughs> and there's so much more. So if we can just set them up now with a complete and balanced diet, you're not going to have those vet visits no. with the ear infections and the itchy skin and the goopy eyes and everything else. So you pay now or you pay later. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't always have to be much, much later either, does it? No, you know, it I see, doesn't. I, I've seen dogs sometimes that I, I've got, bless him, I've got a dog in class um, that I, I'm constantly thinking he's older than he is because he looks older than he is. Um, and I'm, I'm constantly thinking he's like 11, 12 years old and he's only about six or seven, bless him. Mm. <laughs> and he's, he's, fitness wise is very good and to look at him body wise he looks very good but there's just something about him that seems like he's older than he is you know he just mm -hmm. looks his body looks kind of tired at times and he's he grays very quickly um, and he's a, he's a black dog so obviously it shows up much much more and there's 
just little bits and pieces that make you feel like he's a much older dog than he actually is. Um, and I know that he's not on a raw food diet. He's not on a home cooked diet. I know, I know he's on a, a, on a complete kibble. Um, and so, yeah, sometimes I don't even have to be an, an older, older dog <laughs> to have yeah. older dog issues, unfortunately, um, which is a shame for him, bless him. But um, I'm, I'm going to grad- I'm gradually getting there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> sliding bits of information well, across here and there <laughs> i know over here i don't know if you guys have it over there but um i love dr harvey's it's a um, dehydrated vegetable base mix they have it's called raw vibrance that but they do have ones that have the meat already in them right. but i love raw vibrance because it has the veggies and the fruit and the eggshell for calcium yeah. and yeah. green lip muscle <laughs> And then you just add your own meat, raw or cooked, and an oil, and you're done. Complete, balanced, delicious. Dogs love it. So if you can find something like that. um, I'm trying to think. There's there's a couple of things that you you would do something similar with, and I can't think of the name. I used to to use it when I went, um, if I went camping. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah hard to do proper raw when you're camping so right. then, like my little cool box I've got an, uh, one that was developed by in Australia so it, it lasts longer on a hot day or a hot weekend um and so all I needed was a small amount of meat and then I could just add what I needed to to the the powdery type stuff you add water Super to it easy. Everything, everything gets released um and it, it was in there and I can't think of the name it'll come to me can't think of it yeah it'll come to me but it's just it's it's you just look at the pack on the back and it's just every ingredient is something that you recognize and it's just vegetables fruits you know all these lovely lovely things in there and and then vitamins and minerals and, and lovely bits no ash or anything like that it's just all brilliant stuff. <laughs> yep absolutely I lots agree lots yeah <laughs> yep so, you know, and freeze dried, if you don't want to feed raw, if you're like, ooh, I don't want to touch it. Or again, we don't have time to go into <laughs> bacteria on raw food and your dog is fine. Your dog goes out and eats poop. <laughs> they have a very short digestive system and their stomach is much more acidic than ours. Yes, mm. folks, they can eat raw. They should eat eat raw they do beautifully um but antioxidants and the essential fatty acids you have to make sure that they're getting that especially as a senior dog Mm. again we want to reduce any inflammation that they have Mm. so that they don't get the joint issues um and i mean even the brain they're showing you can get inflammation in your brain and for people that is dementia, that's Alzheimer's, that's uh, Parkinson's disease. Dogs have, doggy dementia is a thing. It is, yes. So um, <laughs> sundowners, it, it happens to dogs as well. So um, make sure that they're getting a high quality oil. Mm-hmm. Um, the immune system, we already talked about it, that you want to make sure they have healthy bacteria. We have a company here, Animal Biome. I don't know if they do business also in Europe or not, but oh, okay. they have a test that you can test their uh, good bacteria and bad bacteria. And I was amazed Winston had way too much E. coli. Oh, wow. Now he's fine. But you, nothing is regulated in the industry. No. And I'm talking food. I'm talking supplements toys, uh, treats, Mm -hmm. shoes, nothing is regulated. So we really have to do our homework. Mm -hmm. As you said, read, what are the ingredients in this product? Do I recognize it? If you don't call the company, Mm -hmm. ask them questions. Where do you source your ingredients? Where is this manufactured? Why do you have this (laughs) included? Mm -hmm. Ask questions. Yeah. And the dog can't talk. Sorry, no, no, no. well, occasionally with the terriers, <laughs> I can answer back. But apart from that, um, I was I was just gonna say also, you know, you 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 buy a food sometimes, um, and you think, okay, well, I'm gonna get this particular flavor. I know my dog can't have this or that, or I don't want to feed them that particular type of meat, so I'm gonna get them beef or lamb or fish. Mm-hmm. 
look on the back and actually somewhere in there will be chicken or beef and you're trying to avoid that or whatever it might be so they're mixed yeah know what's in the packet because the predominant Mm -hmm. meat might be the one you're expecting um i know years back there was um i believe they're still going that there was a a a raw food that was just the protein a block of protein and then you added other things to it and their rabbit one was called rabbit dinner Mm -hmm. when you you think oh good rabbit i'll get rabbit and especially like cassie you couldn't have chicken excellent you turn it upside down and it's actually 40 percent was rabbit and 60 percent was chicken (laughs) and they got away with it by putting dinner in there so it was there's rabbit in here but it doesn't make up the whole so even that you know initially i thought oh good i can get that for cassie because she can't have chicken she can't even have that because it's mostly chicken so yes always always check what is going into the food because she just can't be sure that what's on the front is all that's going in there there'll be other bits and pieces in there as well somewhere um which is the downside again of, of something that's complete like that is that you can't sort of pick and choose what goes into the food um but when you're going away from the processed and coming towards things like the trays and the pouches or moving closer towards raw and things like that, there'll be less ingredients going in. So then it's much easier to pick and choose what you need for your own dog and avoid bits that won't be so good for them, either because they can't have it or because it's not just not good for them in the first place. Um, I was going to ask the animal bone, as I'm thinking about it, there is someone in um, a UK raw group who I, I do know um and i'm sure she did i don't know if it's a similar thing but she did a test for her dogs must have been the start of this year to see what they had in their system and it Mm -hmm. it 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 was a very comprehensive reply that she got back once they've been tested and it was looking at the 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 microbiome and and the gut and everything going on in there and told her it's just when you mentioned about the e coli it mentioned everything that was in the dog system basically so then she could see what she needed to adjust and why yes. and, and how and things like that. Um, and she, she couldn't believe even her older dog just sort of bounced back after doing that for a few weeks and getting all the old stuff out the system. Um, yeah. Just sort of lost years of her life from just being back to being active and playful and bouncy and, and everything else. It was She just couldn't believe it. And she's she's a raw food advocator. She's always fed raw. But she there were just things that she hadn't, put in and there were things that were in there that she didn't need so she right. just managed to balance it all out so I don't know if that's a similar type of thing I yes. don't know what the name of the company is but I will look that up so that I can let people know what that is uh, um, and, and, and get that in there um, with oils I am under the belief and I, this is something that I've kind of had in my mind for years so I don't even know where it came from um, but there's lots and lots of oils that you can get to supplement your dog's food so many different types whether it's a fish oil or a non-fish oil um and they talk about your omega-3s and your omega-6s um, am i right in thinking or have i misunderstood this that if you're giving an oil to increase the omega-3 or 6 that you need to make sure the vitamin e levels are in balance with it or have i just made that up completely <laughs> I, I have not heard that i mean vitamin e itself is wonderful. It's a great antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Um, and as you said, fish oil is wonderful, but at the same time, we're raping our oceans Mm -hmm. to produce it. So they do have, you know, farms that raise green lip muscle for oil, fish for oil. So you're not raping the oceans and it's more sustainable. Mm. Um, there is a product actually on my website that is plant-based, right? So they take the camelina seed and olive oil wow. and it still has the entire omega three, six profile. Um, and you don't have to put it in the fridge. Because a lot of people don't realize that fish oil does go rancid once you open it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's another thing you just have to do your homework on which oil to feed your dog. Yeah. But again, can of sardines in water, put it in their food. It's delicious. They love it. So the smaller the fish, the better. Mm-hmm. You probably know with the larger fish, more mercury is... Yeah, in that fish yeah. but the little guys the sardines the anchovies yum <laughs> dogs love them and they're great 
I love them. They're like they're like little sprats as well. Yes, like dried sprats and, and normal sprats. They'll have occasionally, but yeah, they do like their sardines. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good stuff. And Joe, I want to go back to one thing that you mentioned: um, allergies. It's actually a misnomer. A lot of dogs don't actually have an allergy to a certain protein. Okay. It is, if you take your dog and give them a rotation of proteins, it's actually an intolerance right. that people are seeing to a certain protein, not an allergy. Allergies do happen, but it's, it's rare. It's, yeah. it's an intolerance. Yeah. So I really encourage people to rotate your proteins and your dogs are going to love it. <laughs> Variety is key. Mm. And each protein has its own amino, process, amino acid profile. So it's good to rotate your proteins so that they don't have an intolerance. Um, so you want to start them young with that. Mm. So as we're talking about protein, this is key with senior dogs. If you have a healthy senior dog, and I mean that they don't have kidney or liver issues, they should actually get more protein as they age. Yes. So that, you know, protein helps build and maintain their muscle. It strengthens their immune system and it supports their central nervous system as well. So again, we want to steer away from poor quality protein sources, mm. especially for senior dogs. So if you can stay <laughs> away from the meat meal and the bone meal, please don't go that way. Um, because the inflammatory markers in those, because they're sub quality and they are exposed to high heat. And this is going to put more strain on your senior dog's organs. Mm -hmm. So quality, bioavailable, digestible protein <laughs> is the way to go. Um, so this is not just my opinion. There is research that says that you have to increase the protein for aging dogs. It's just a fact. So the other protein sources, if they're not getting enough, they're going to have weakened kidney and liver function. And that means that their entire body is not even going to process the amount of protein that they're given. So I really, really want you guys to look at that. Um, so with, with higher protein. So we're talking about obviously meats. It's obviously a really good way of getting protein. Um, are there other things that we can do other than just kind of just looking at the types of meat? Because obviously that can be a minefield in itself if we don't really know what we're doing. I mean, my freezer at the moment, I must have about at least 20 different types of, of meat protein in my freezer for the dogs. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I just don't, I don't eat meat a lot. I'm not a meat, not a vegetarian. I just don't eat a lot of meat. Right. Um, but the freezer is literally packed full of different types of meat for the dogs. And they, they can go two weeks without having the same thing twice, basically. That's wonderful. Um, which, which is great. And they love it. They always love it. Um, but, you know, I've done a lot of research and I've been doing raw for a long, long time and I'm very comfortable with it, but of course it, not everyone is. Um, are there ways of, of increasing protein for a senior dog if you are either having home cooked or if you are doing raw, but you don't really know what you're doing, um, or if you are using kibble, are there ways of increasing protein? I mean, you sort of, you might think, okay, all I'll do is just grab some chicken and just chuck it on top of the, the kibble. Are there ways of doing this that's a bit easier than just sticking a, chat, a slab of meat on top? <laughs> yeah, uh, we talked about freeze-dried. Yes. We that, is, freeze that is raw meat with the moisture taken out. Yeah. So sure, they are great toppers uh, yeah. as well as standalones. You know, we have a lot of freeze-dried, air-dried, complete and balanced meals. But if you're going to do that, I really suggest that you add water because anything that is extruded where the moisture is taken out of the food, these dogs are walking around dehydrated. So you want to put that hydration back in 
that's a very easy way. There's great freeze dried food slash toppers out there that you can just easily add. Mm -hmm. And Joe, I'm glad you brought this up because treats, <laughs> most treats on the market are just filled with junk with the oh, yeah. corn and the soy and no dogs <laughs> need a limited ingredient treat. And that could be your protein source right there. Sure. A freeze dried little piece of, you know, beef heart yeah. or liver, what have you. I would rather see you do that with less calories and a higher quality protein. No, so it makes sense. That yeah. makes it easy. Yeah. There's so many treats that, that because you can get away with saying certain things in a certain way. So there's, there's treats that have got, you know, EC permitted colorants and things like this on there. And, and, you know, this is on here and this is on there, but no grains. That's the thing at the moment, isn't it? Everyone is pr pr pronouncing that there's no grains in their food or their treats. Yes. And then people yes. are mad for it. Oh, I'll buy this because there's no grains in it. I don't know what else is in there, but there's no grains. That's I'll tell you what's in there. It's starch. <laughs> Yes. It's the peas, it's the potatoes yeah. and it's no better for them than the grains. And, you know, let's go back to dogs do not need carbohydrates in their diet yet. We're feeding them carbs either in the form of grain or these peas, legumes, potatoes, and the problem, at least here in Europe, it's so much better, but we are spraying these crops with pesticides and it's called glyphosate over here. Um, the company is Monsanto. They started in the seventies. So it's those vegetables like the legumes that have the highest concentration of these pesticides. Therefore, all the diseases, if you put the chart up as you start spraying more crops, this is non-organic, obviously, you can just track the diseases are going up at the same rate of the spraying. And <laughs> bad, isn't it? It's the toxins that are already in our environment. We yeah. if we can keep them out of our food, that would be great because it's in our air, it's in our homes. Yeah. You know, here in the States, we've got these Glade plug-ins that you plug oh, yeah. into the wall with. You've got the ones that spray is now as well. If you walk past it, it sprays. Yes. And it's outwards. right at their face yeah. level <laughs> and they can't get away from it. And our laundry detergent and what we uh, clean our carpets with, it's just so toxic. So um, the recent studies going back to protein, they show that older dogs may need as much as 50% more wow. protein in their senior years. Gosh. And you guys know with the breed of dog that you have, you know, smaller dogs, it might be that 10 is when they're considered senior yeah. versus the larger um, breeds that could be senior at six or seven. So protein is key. But again, if your dog is in renal failure, you need to speak with your veterinarian because higher protein might cause them even more harm, but we're talking healthy adult senior dogs, better protein, more protein. So it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so back to your question from before, a healthy older dog should get 25% or more of their calories from a high quality protein. So again, I prefer that these proteins be derived from animal sources and not plant-based because you see, again, in a lot of kibble, the corn, the wheat, the soy, yeah. that is not a high quality protein source. And when they're putting the ingredients on the bag, maybe beef is the number one ingredient, but it, <laughs> it kind of is a trickery because they're taking that with moisture. Yes, beef with moisture is the most prevalent ingredient in this food. But then they remove the moisture. And if you compare that to the other dry ingredients in this food, 
realistically beef will probably be in the middle or even lower comes with often it will say something like minimum <clears throat> minimum amount is like yes. 4% or something isn't it it's, it's a really really low percentage yeah on the front oh, they trick you beef yeah beef flavor <laughs> not good not <laughs> good a lot of beef in it but it's a beef flavor Just yes see what these say on here <laughs> what's in these um how much time do we have joe um, we, we've still got, if we're doing an hour, we've got just under a quarter of an hour. Um, okay. we can, we can always do a part two another time. If you'd like to do a part two another time, or we can focus on maybe the raw side of things a little bit more, things like that. Well, the only thing I was going to add is supplements. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. The best so thing we is, talked about fish oil. So many general ones, but not many people talk about what to do when your dog is that little bit older. Yes. <laughs> So the fish oils, it's a must have for joints and anti-inflammatories. Vitamins and minerals. I already mentioned that organ meat is the perfect uh, vitamin mineral to feed your dog. And I, I hate to keep going back to kibble, but I just have to make people aware that when they're making this high heat processed food, all the vitamins and minerals are cooked out of it. Therefore, they have to put a synthetic mix of vitamins and minerals back into that dry processed food for it to be considered complete and balanced. Am I right in thinking that when you've got um, a, a, a vitamin or something that's actually reconstructed and created it's not a natural vitamin mineral etc cetera, etc cetera, but man-made that it actually would be harder for the body to utilize it and absorb it than if it was just naturally done absolutely and they're going to pee it out yes they are. yes <laughs> yeah that's what's going to happen so um for joints number one we want to make sure that they are not overweight mm. Number two, I like, I've found a product over here. And again, I'm sorry, I don't know if they ship overseas, but it's a patented, it's called Happy Bond. And it actually rebuilds cartilage. Wow. And it works. So it has your glucosamine and other vitamins and minerals with it. They have three different formulas. So you can start from puppy to adult to senior, uh, Winston gets senior and I thought Winston was fine, but I try out all of the products that I stand behind and he was not walking anymore. He was running on our walks. Wow. So I didn't even know he was having mobility issues until I tried this product. So I would look for a joint supplement. Again, you have to do your homework. And vitamin C is good for inflammation, glucosamine, some have chondroitin. I like this, this happy bond because um, it has the collagen as well. Okay. So look at that, your omega-3 fatty acids, huge. Um, CBD. <laughs> okay, let's talk about CBD for a minute. It's getting more. Popular. It's everywhere. At least no here. One, no one knows what they do. Yeah, it's get, it's very popular over here. You Lots can find it in a gas station. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a really good quality one. <laughs> yes, it must be. Um, again, people, we got to do our research because some of these are snake oil. Some yeah. of these you are paying so much money, and they don't have. The full spectrum CBD. It's again, nothing is regulated. No, you have to find a company, and I've got some on my website that I absolutely love. They're third party tested, it works. Um, they're even over here now. Um, in, in the last couple of years, they've actually made it. I don't even know who powers that be have decided that you cannot market something that's CBD for dogs. So all the companies in the UK that were CBD for dogs, and that was in their title and things like that, they've had to stop and just say, oh, the CBD, yes, it's it's 
for humans and then if someone says can I use it for my dog they will say oh we can't tell you to do that and then they have to do it in a private message because they can't state that they sell CBD for dogs they're not allowed right. to do that <laughs> right it's crazy well it's- over here our veterinarians can't even talk about it they might think it's the best thing for your yeah. dog but they can't talk about it so again right. you're on your own it's the wild west yeah. out there. It's mad, isn't it? But as we're talking about supplements, one that you can make yourself that is super nutritious and senior dogs can really uh, gain is bone broth. I knew you are going to say that. I love Yay! bone broth. I don't broth. love it. I love it for the dogs. <laughs> yes. Yes. I don't I've eat it myself. It. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. But it's so easy to make. Um, you can do it in a crock pot. I do it in my instant pot, which is such a great consistency. It's perfect. It doesn't take as much time, but this is power packed nutrition. It's all natural. You just buy some soup bones at the butcher or at the market and put it in your water. And there's, there's some great um, recipes online, but it's so good for their organs and their immune system uh, and their joints because it's like got the collagen. Exactly. It's got everything. I, I mean, if you stick some um, ACV in there, apple cider vinegar in there, it helps get everything off the bone, doesn't it? So you're right. Coming through and coming out. Um, I like to use it as well. I've always got some just frozen in sort of ice, ice cube trays. So if one of my dogs, it doesn't happen very often, but if one is not too well, once they are starting to look a little bit better, I'll give them more bone broth to help just try and give them some nutrients because if they're not feeling like they want to eat and they don't want to eat anything at all it's tempting to go just eat something <laughs> absolutely <laughs> especially if it's in the fridge from the fridge and it's got a nice bit of jelly on top they love it oh they love it yeah, mm. yeah. so bone broth it contains <laughs> vitamins yeah. and minerals it's going to support their general health as well as their immune health it's got the glucosamine the chondroitin hyaluronic acid to support that joint health uh, it has glycine, which is good for liver function, natural anti-inflammatory compounds um, like proline and arginine and the glycine, easy to digest. Dogs love it. And it's very soothing to their digestive tract. Um, and as you were saying, Joe, even dogs that might not have a big appetite, they will eat the bone broth. They love it. Yeah. So um, I love that as a supplement because it's natural and you can make it easily. You can, you can buy it over here. Some places you can't well here too. It's not going to be as good as doing it yourself, but you can, you can buy it. Um, places that sell raw food, sell yes. bone broth in um, like little cartons, little, um, little paper, not paper card cartons. Um, and they're not too bad. The ingredients aren't too bad. It's still not as good as doing it yourself, but it's, mm-hmm. it's if you didn't have some and you wanted some quickly, or if you wanted to get started and see what your dog thought of it without the putting things in a pot pot, right? <laughs> it's something that you could get you started. Yeah, try it first, buy yeah. a commercial brand, and then just know it's so easy to make at home. I get those jelly jars and I just pour it in there. It's frozen. And then every week I pull out a new jar and add it to Winston's food. And he absolutely loves it. Mm-hmm. So on that note, you probably have it there too. Goat milk. Yes. Oh yes, they okay. have goat's milk each morning. <laughs> Yay, your dogs are lucky, Joe. <laughs> they get up, they have the goat's milk, they go back to bed and have their breakfast later on. <laughs> Goat milk is oh see, so yeah, I feel like I have so much to say, but many dogs cannot tolerate cow's milk. And it's because of the size of the protein in cow's milk that they cannot, um, it's not bioavailable to them. And that's why a lot of dogs are lactose intolerant, just like we are. But goat milk is so healthy, loaded with pre and probiotics. It's of course got the calcium in it. Dogs love it. So if you've never tried bone or uh, goat milk, I would try that. And then there's also fermented fish stock, yeah, I've not tried that, I have to admit. <laughs> oh, dogs love it. It's a little stinky, as you can yeah. imagine, but of course, dogs love that. <laughs> Absolutely. I think you're the better. <laughs> so, 
So, fish, so fish. many good things oh. out there that are so good for your dog. And then as we're wrapping up, it probably goes without saying, but senior dogs, physical and mental exercise, don't ever stop doing that with your dog, no matter how old they are. They might just go a little slower, yep. but get them out, do activities, um, let them go for a walk. Ooh, you know, I call yes. it sniffari. Yes. I'm not going to tell Winston <laughs> today where we're walking. I'm going to go where he wants to go. And I'm going to be patient and stop at every blade of grass for him. <laughs> so that he can sit. Because that mental activity, you know, keep learning new tricks. Yeah. Dogs love it. Give them a job play games, do the find it, do some treats around the house and have them find it and use their sense of smell that they are so much better at than mm -hmm. us. It just, it goes a long way. And you can tie your, your dog out more yes. through using their brain than you can with physical exercise. Yes. Yeah. You will have a calm, happy dog. Do loads of physical exercise, but they can still then come home and still be active and alert. bouncing off the walls yeah. yes because their brain hasn't been necessarily <laughs> yes. challenged in any way whatsoever um sorry i've just got three three very tired dogs next to me here oh because they've done some brain work today yeah now they're tired yay um <laughs> but i'm i'm all for that that's something that i say to people so often and and, and i know people that have their dogs have been um you know diagnosed with a joint issue or an arthritis issue or other issues when they are younger than we maybe expect it to happen so they don't might be five or six or seven and they've been diagnosed with different things and so their mindset is okay i'll have to stop everything i'll just i won't take them anywhere we won't do walks if we do it'll be a tiny little walk um you know we can't do this we can't do that and it's such a shame because you know the it, it very much the less you do with your dog the less they'll be able to do because then the brain right. going to be as active and the brain's not going to be as active and they're going to lose most of their willpower to actually do anything. Um, whereas I've got dogs in, in, in agility, for example, and I will put the jumps right down low if needed and I'll set up straight line courses with no sharp turns and things like this. We've got dogs at the moment that are 12, 13 years old. We had a dog retire at 15 a couple of years ago. And right. yeah, she had everything flat and the tunnel was straight so that she couldn't fall over anything and the weaves were opened up a bit. She loved it, you know. Absolutely. And she had the best time. She'd cut her tail was going. Great. Right. We made sure she warmed up and cooled down and you know looked after the body. She loved it. And it was nice because she could get out and just spend time with her her mum without the other dogs and without other people. And she just it was just their time together. And they mm -hmm. had a lovely time doing it, you know, they really enjoyed it. But um, yeah, get doing stuff. I'm I'm totally behind you on that one. Yes, <laughs> always, yes. always, always, always. <laughs> um, so, um, Tracy, did you have anything you would like to ask Krista while we have you here? Anything at all while we've been talking? If you've sort of anything sort of popped up and you've thought, oh, oh, you can write it or you can say it. Either way is absolutely fine. And this is me assuming that Tracy is still here. Of course, <laughs> she's right. still here. <laughs> 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 she may she'll go oh, damn it i've just popped out the room to get a drink now they're bloody talking to me <laughs> but, um, oh this was so fun joe i could this, this i could chat about this forever brilliant. and it's really nice to hear from somebody else um mentioning things that i'm already doing because although i do my research it's lapsed a little bit you know the last couple of years I haven't done as much as I did previous years and so you, you sort of you know one year something's good for your dog the next year it's not again it's nice to know that I am doing something right with my dogs <laughs> you're a good got, dog mom I've got some ideas for more things that I can do for my dogs as well and if then something I'm giving them they don't like anymore or I can't do it or can't get hold of it or whatever reason I know that there's other things I can be doing as well yep. as or instead of to help them out um which is really really nice and even for for little tiny oh my god she looks adorable um little tiny puppy who is on kibble and that's that's it's it's um all organized through the um charity for the dogs for mm -hmm. autism charity by a pet food company so that's what she's fed sure. um, i can add i can give her goat's milk i can give her an egg on her Absolutely. food and i can add to it at least to make it 
um, better. So I'm just taking a picture of all three because this time yesterday, well, actually this time yesterday I was taking classes, but later yesterday, um, there's no way that these three would have been laying like this because they were they were telling each other off. I don't know if you can see that very well. Oh, the on there is. <laughs> Rose hanging out. And we've got one one snoring. The Labrador's snoring. The terriers are just chilling. Oh my gosh, that's like that never happens. That very no, not very often. In fact, normally when I'm when I'm talking on online, normally Merlin's here going woof, woof, <laughs> woof. I'm like what? Okay, have a treat. Shut up. He has woof. something to say. <laughs> yeah, he's always got something to say. Never used to, <laughs> once lockdown started, and I was doing more and more online, doing online training and classes and, and zooms and things like this. He then started learning that if he told me that a car had gone past outside, for example, or if he was letting me know that there was someone appeared on the TV that wasn't there before by just giving it a, a woof. And then he'd look at me. I did that. Do you like that? Do I get anything? <laughs> Aren't you proud of me? Yeah, exactly. And your instincts to go, Sh that's enough. Should what have to treat and then shush. <laughs> And then now we get it for everything. So I need to I need to work on that really at some point. But because most of the time I'm talking online, it's because I'm actually doing something online. <laughs> so right. I need well, Master continue. Winston entered the room from his sunny spot. Come oh, see him. Come on, Winston. We need to meet you. I know. And he is Winston Churchill. <laughs> of course. Hey, hi to Joe. Hi. Hey, Winston. Hi. <laughs> 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 he's got a merlin face what oh. <laughs> what do you want oh i know he just woke oh. up he's all warm from oh, is he? oh that's the best oh, <laughs> him. he's gorgeous and i'm Thank totally you. not biased when i say that no <laughs> oh tracy wrote something oh, in the hello. chat I could hear you but couldn't find how to speak or comment Really interesting talk. Need to re-listen. I'm going to re-listen as well, to be fair, Tracy, because I, I've made notes, but I, I've got there's bits I missed, so I'm going to make more notes. <laughs> I like making notes. <laughs> well, we're always okay. learning. Never exactly. stop learning. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with that as well. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Um, so I think then we will finish for today with this particular topic of senior dogs um and um yeah i think it would be really nice to have an, another chat another time when you're free to talk about more specific topics perhaps as well um, oh my gosh i have so many topics you know, I've, I've got the <laughs> fitness side you've got the nutrition side there's mm -hmm. so much stuff that can that can go together um so before we finish could you tell people how can they reach your podcast how can they get hold of all the brilliant things that you've talked about and, and had people talking about in the past well thank you joe <laughs> well just go to wagoutloud.com and all of the podcast episodes are there it's free to listen you can download right from the website or never miss an episode and just follow on your favorite podcast player uh, I have lots of great free resources on the site. We do events just like this. Um, and then starting in January, I'm going to go to two episodes a month instead of every week because I have some other fun and exciting things that I will be working on still in the canine health and wellness space. So I just would want to free up my time to do a lot more. So I'm really excited about what the future holds. Wow, that does sound very exciting. Yay! Keep an eye out and see what that's going to be. <laughs> yes, yes, stay tuned. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so, so much, Krista. It's been fabulous talking, well, talking with you, but mostly listening to you because it's just, there's been, I'm writing notes manically and thinking, oh, I'll ask about that in a minute, but I don't want to interrupt because I'm listening and I'm really enjoying what I'm listening to. <laughs> oh, well, this was a pleasure and I just, I encourage everybody to advocate for your dog's health and wellness. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, nothing is regulated, unfortunately, in the pet industry. So we have to do our due diligence and our homework, but our dogs will really appreciate that effort. And you can, you, I mean, at the minute, I'm just looking at three dogs snoring, but generally you can look at your dogs and kind of just think, you know, look how happy they are. They're able to run or play or they can lay comfortably or look at how much they're enjoying what they're eating or whatever it might be. And you can then know that you're doing the best you can to help your dogs be the best they can. And yes. there's, there's nothing you can get around that. That's just 
such a nice feeling. It's so nice to be able to do that. Absolutely. So, um, so we are going to finish here. So, um, Tracy, thank you for joining us. I, I, I was pretty sure you'd be here <laughs> because you are really, really good with your dogs and you do so many things. If I if I ask Tracy to do something or suggest it, she does it. She's absolutely fantastic with her dogs. <laughs> um, and um, I will I'll speak to you um, online later, Tracy. Um, we're going to finish the recording here. Um, so um, hold fire where you are. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for listening in. If you do have any questions, then you can also contact, obviously, myself um, at Dog Training for Essex and Suffolk, or you can contact Krista via her Wag Out Loud um, podcast and on her website as well. Um, thank you again so much for joining us, Krista, and we're going to finish there for now. Thank you.